What's up, y'all? We are live here in Birmingham for the last night of the trip. This is uh, an impromptu live. I did not tell anyone what's going live. I did not plan this, but I thought I would come on here and tell you guys the story. So hopefully, if you are seeing that I went live and will jump on here with me, talk about uh, <laughs> Clerks 93, you are not going to miss a whole lot of excitement. That's what my arm looks like today. So um, the right arm is basically fucked. Um, we're going to go back and get this thing scanned and see what happened, what has happened to me. But in match number one, um, with Alex, you guys know about the travel nightmare I got to get here. And I've got like the fucking, the body is not working. I, I got here, I got, I left Wednesday, I got here like 10, 10, my plane landed in Birmingham on Friday. I ended up, uh, yeah, I've been rough for North America, but try scheduling some of these matches in North America. Maybe we'll see a bit of a difference. I'm So the travel nightmare happens. I get here, I'm in a room. Um, and I've got one night, got one night to sleep and two o'clock in the morning, the fucking Bulgarians arrive here and they're all staying in my room too. So it ends up being like seven of us on night number one that are staying in this room that has three beds over there, two beds there and a couple of couches in the living room. And then we end up with uh, an extra guest because Vlad the Destroyer's father got pissed drunk here the night after the event and slept on the couch as well. So it um, it was interesting. Match number one, I felt three distinct tears in my arm. It's like one, two, three, very fast but it was almost like the cold water or hot water. I don't know how to describe the sensation, but it's you can feel the ripping as it happens. One, two, three. Alex hits me over to here. I dead wrist all the way back. And as I'm doing that, I feel three things tear in my arm. And um, man, I'm still in Birmingham, Matt Schultz. I'm still in Birmingham. Um, and then I know something's wrong, but I feel like I can still do, yes, I warmed up before the match. And the funny thing about that is when I'm warming up, I'm warming up very lightly with uncle John and everything is getting pumped like light warming up that I do all the time. My arm is like pumped like crazy. Like the inflammation is just so bad that I can't keep it out of there. And it's, um, I tear the things in my arm. I try match number two <clears throat> and I pulled. So that wasn't you. What are you talking about, Stevie Diamond? I tried to pull straight back with Alex with a little bit of success, but at that point, um, at that point, I felt like I had nowhere else to go and he hit so violently. My arm went down and I could see stuff like balling up in my arm. So I knew something had torn. And uh, yeah, uh, what can I say? The day was over. And when I say the day, I kind of mean the day. Two hours later, I had to come back and arm wrestle left handed. And yeah, you can see it every time I wipe my forehead. Um, Come back two hours later, arm wrestle left-handed. We have a decent match, but he gets the hit every time outside the strap. Um, outside the strap, I could take his hand and wrist a little bit. Once I went to the strap, it was all Alex, and hats off to him for winning. 
but uh yeah it's so weird it's so weird yeah so there's some shit going on in there and that's only the day one color usually it takes longer than that but um i'm going to go home regroup go to a sports clinic get it scanned see what the hell is going on in there and then uh go from there maybe take a little bit of time off a little bit of time off of training and just you know get in shape and do some basic gym stuff but ah, there's some shit going on in my body that needs to be worked out and i need to figure it out before i uh continue to compete daniel yurik yeah i can say i didn't try i can't say you didn't try and didn't back down yeah i know that's true i tried and uh the funny thing is it's not funny but in match number six left-handed i actually felt the same thing starting to happen in my left arm and at that point i just bailed and let it go down but had i continued pulling i probably would have the same weirdo color in my left arm as my right because something was definitely wrong so it is what it is the event was amazing north america um did not have a very good showing again but you know i think we need to hold out a little bit and perhaps let them come out first matt you know what man uh, i honestly don't know if it would have mattered if we did the left arm first um Alex is a big, strong, violent hitting guy. Uh, Peter, how do I rate Alex? I don't know, man. Um, <laughs> my queen is in the chat. Hello, Victoria. I love you too. Um, how do I rate Alex? Man, very high, very high. Uh, he is a humongous individual with an immense amount of potential and a, and a tremendous amount of patience watch the left-handed match had he tried to just hit straight through to the pin um he potentially could have allowed me an opening to get back in the match he showed way more patience than he did in his previous matches where he tried to do that and lost he got position and he was patient so he has improved technically quite a bit so yeah, alex versus Hermes would be interesting it sure would alex is like a true super heavyweight version of matt mask He's naturally over 300 pounds. Yeah, White Wolf Ryan, you just getting in here. Just getting in here. What a fucked up jerk. Yeah, it was. It was so weird, man. Um, I'm certain that Neil will invite me back for another Arm Wars at some point, but uh, I need to do things a little bit differently leave a few days earlier, um, make sure I have my nutrition lined up when I get here, stay in a hotel where I'm not tripping over seven other guys every day where I show up and it's, the heat's turned up to 30 degrees and there's guys sitting around with their shirts off, you know, and that super heavyweight guys are sweating. Yeah, time to improve, time to heal, time to improve. Yeah, so it was, yeah, Jeff Hale also got an injury. Yeah, I've got my work cut out for me. So it's concerning because I have all this discoloration in here, but it is also in my tricep. So the three tears I felt all felt like they're in my forearm. And so I still have full, slow, but full range of motion which means probably nothing is fully ruptured although i do hurt at full extension 
and at full extension it's in the forearm and in the bicep um, so also wrist flexion hurts this doesn't hurt anything past that starts to hurt so i'm going to go get a sports clinic scan maybe an mri when i get home um <laughs> that's messed up you have your aim on stupid scared canada yet lawyer up well they have much deeper pockets than i do so if i do anything it will be a small claim which i think i have a case for and when they don't show up i'll default win it and they probably won't show up for a couple thousand bucks <laughs> People have realized how hard it is to compete after traveling, especially flying overnight. Hard as hell to be in good form. I still haven't acclimated. So when all those guys came into the room the night before I competed, I had slept from about 11 p.m., which is um, 4 p.m. Manitoba time. 4 p.m. where I'm from, I went to bed on the first real full day that I was here. Was woken up at 2 a.m., which was, um, I can't even think right now, 8 p.m. Manitoba time. And I sat there for two hours trying to get back to sleep and then was exhausted when I got to the, the venue. So it's going to definitely need some better preparation next time for the trip. I took for granted that maybe I could do it like I used to do it when I was 25 years old, but I can't. I need some extra time. Um, yeah, Dave Pryor need at least two weeks to acclimate. Well, at least at least more than a day. <laughs> you know, hope you will. hope you heal well and come back stronger. Do you think it's just a freak injury? How did Alex feel? Had the injury not happened? Do you feel your not on that day? Um, bygone era. Good name. Uh, I don't feel like I was in the match. Uh, right-handed. Yeah, I mean, there's no really way to know what it was what would have happened. But you know, it was a tough one. I would have given it my all. But my God, like when I felt my left being on the verge of the same thing happening, it was scary for me to think that I've never torn anything ever, ever in my arm wrestling career, and suddenly I was about to like truly injure both arms and you know alex is a hard hitter but he's i faced hard hitters before like i could sit there and let jerry cataret jump on my arm and not tear things <clears throat> flying east is the toughest coming west is a walk in the park yeah because you basically leave at the same time you arrive not enough money to show up a week early. Well, in hindsight, had I left a week early, it probably would have been less expensive. This is the most expensive arm wrestling trip I've ever taken. Jimmy, thank you for speedy recovery from Christy and Jim. I um, was going to say you really had no rest. No, I didn't. Takes me three days minimum to acclimate going to Europe from SoCal. Wasn't the skill gap just a strength thing? Dave Pryor, uh, no, it's not a skill gap. I have 25 years experience to Alex's, like five. <clears throat> but you also need uh, the power to execute your technique. Now, my left, I have one move. My right, I've got options. And I probably could have utilized those, but... Alex is uh, like a younger version of me. He's got that massive, massive hit. You don't need arms to sell houses, at least. Well, you, you'd be able to write with a pen, but... All right. Was there a specific round where you got hurt? Yes, round number one. And then I foolishly continued into round number two. 
And the only thing that crossed my mind was people are going to think that I faked this fucking injury. <laughs> that's, that's the type of thing that my head went through um, when that happened until I looked down at my arm and I saw balled up tissue down by my elbow. Did you guys get to have a beer after? Yes, we did. Once you heal up, what will you change in training? I will do more compound complete movements in my training. Mirko, your channel deserves much more support. Well, I appreciate that. I think so too. So more compound movements instead of specific small muscle muscle groups. Luke Bolscher, hey buddy, just jumped on. Did you pull left? How did that go? Sorry about the right man. The Arnold curse is really something. Yeah, I told everybody about the Arnold curse before. The travel nightmares I faced, having to drive 10 hours in a snowstorm from Toronto to Columbus. Um, Luke, to answer your question. Right, left arm went. Uh, I didn't hurt myself, but I was on the verge of it. So I told everyone that on round six, I felt like the whole same thing was happening to my left arm. Um, decent matches, but... Uh, Alex had to make my ass basically six nothing. Is there a link? I don't know if there's a link. I haven't looked. <clears throat> Devin, I'll get into that next week. What compounds? I'm going to start redesigning my program right away, but actually doing it. And some of that design is going to count on the fact. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Some of that is going to count on. Uh what I'm told by doctors this week too. Um, White Wolf, yeah, that Arnold curse. I did mention that before leaving. Yeah, I did. So maybe I manifested that on my own somehow. Yeah, Luke says, wow, okay, heal up, buddy. Thanks, Luke. I shall. I'll be back. Um, Alex, though, I mean, he better not fly under the radar. He's going to He's gonna light some people up. Fox 8-Ball. I got, I got to meet Fox 8-Ball for the first time. He had arm wars shaved into the back of his head. Matt Schultz. There actually hasn't been much released as far as matches yet. I figured Neil is busy working and partying. He is definitely not partying. He has been commentating every day at Arm Wars and today at Giants Live. And I could hear him from the expo trying to commentate the event and his voice sounded like it was going away on him and he was struggling to, to do that part of his job, but he got through it. Um, here's the other thing. Neil was live streaming every match while he was commentating, but Across the hall from where we were, there was a dance competition going on. Why is that relevant to this? The dance competition was playing music. So every time Neil put out a live stream, the dance music was playing in the background and he was getting copyright strikes. So he had to stop because he got to the maximum amount of copyright strikes before they banned his channel. So Neil had to stop doing the live stream. However, his camera crew is here and they will release a final version of all of this. Yeah. I did, Fox 8 Ball. I saw you down in the crowd. Yeah, I saw you down in the crowd. It was awesome. Yeah, it was nice to meet you. Uh, was I surprised about the RVJ match? Man, I don't know. Like, uh, I had a feeling that I had a feeling that um, RVJ wasn't going to win that match. I was hoping he would, and I was cheering for him, but. 
he flew over here as well and probably went through much of the same stuff and also did not have the full preparation time if he knew that this was, you know, months down the road. No excuses. Like, it was a dominant performance. Sasho, being a much smaller individual, just kind of took him right into a hook and did his thing. It was, uh, yeah, it was interesting to watch. Oh, man. Billy Berger, are you thinking of adding more tools to your arsenal, different styles of pulling? Yes, because my ace move hurts me to train. So I think I need to develop a completely different primary move. And um, on the right arm, I was starting to do that. On the left arm, I was way behind and still doing that one that one top roll, which usually works. But, uh, yeah, it is what it is. Matt Schultz, you have a surgeon lined up in Manitoba? No. Um, my wife is making the appointment tomorrow at Legacy, which is a, a very good sports clinic. Stevie Diamond didn't look like the WAL RVJ. White Wolf. White Wolf just signed up as a YouTube member. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you. <clears throat> yeah, Fox A Ball, you did have a good time, man. I was happy to see that. And uh, yeah, I mean, I got to hang out with Big Laws a little bit. Eddie Hall wandered backstage. I did not have time to do the GSP thing, go and meet him or Khabib. Um, I did run into Adam Silver in the middle of the uh, event. And he took uh, Tom and I past the lineup, the two-mile-long lineup, to uh, meet Larry Wheels. Uh, it looked like even Giannis could beat RVJ there. Well, I don't know what was. I saw the, the little the photo of them after pulling. Not really sure what was happening there. Um, and there's always a story behind after pulling. So... Or for all we know, RVJ could be 18 drinks deep and had pulled 25 guys. Billy Burry, yeah, his levers are incredibly high, and I saw all the height he got. Now, there was a little bit of inconsistency on the right arm. Um, Because, and this was not an excuse because the right arm would have happened regardless. So I always go thumb up on the right arm. The referee was saying because I am choosing to go thumb up, Alex is actually allowed to cover my thumb knuckle, which I clarified after the match was over and being injured is not correct. <clears throat> so that was fixed on day two when we pulled left. Fox 8 Ball, yo, Dan, best day of my life. Being right now, the heroes we have. Fox 8 Ball, I'm happy you're happy. Oh, Yanis was just giving him some tips on how to beat Sasho. Well, that's the thing. Everyone is, uh, there's certain people that are great at coaching and certain people are great at what they do. I'm not sure where Yanis falls in this, but, um, I haven't seen your match yet. When is it coming up? I have no idea. And to be honest, I probably won't even watch it because I don't want to know right now. Stevie Diamond, what? What, what? Stevie Diamond. Was it the comment about the uh, Daniel Yurick? Welcome to the chip jar. Daniel Yurick is now a member of the channel on YouTube. Thank you very much. Two new members. White Wolf ordered the SBR Morse t-shirt last week. Thank you, sir.
Mirko, how much time will it take for full recovery? <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know. I don't have a diagnosis of what the injury actually is. Um, don't know. So we'll find out when I get home. Yeah. Well, apparently, if you type in SB Credential, it'll be the first on YouTube. Matt, I certainly hope there are some more positive, memorable moments for you. Hanging out with friends, doing some stuff. Yeah, it was good, hanging out with people. Dinner with Neil and the crew yesterday. Daniel says, I ordered an SB Armour shirt. I can fit two people in it. <laughs> he ordered, he must have ordered a 4XL or something. <clears throat> After the event, it was fun, but I still have not, I still have not recovered from the travel. I still have not recovered from the travel getting here. And at three o'clock in the morning, which is 9 p.m., Manitoba time. I am leaving for the airport because at four, I have to be there to check in. And at six, my flight leaves to come home. White Wolf, that looked gnarly. Did you have anything planned before 2022? No. Well, I did. I was supposed to pull Matt Mask right handed next month, but that got canceled because. Um, well, it's a good thing it got canceled because I would have had to cancel it. Canceled because COVID has basically shut down the province of Alberta and many other provinces. Yeah. Uncle John Brzezink, how's the morale afterwards for the North Americans? It was all right. I hate the way things played out. Still hoping you guys can have a somewhat good time. Yeah, in the very short amount of time we had here. So part of me going to the Arnolds is always being able to walk around and actually enjoy the Arnolds. And I didn't get to fully do that, but I did spend a couple hours there today and uh, had some memories and posted a bunch of stuff on Instagram. And, of course, Alex and Camille say, hey, come eat with us. So I go out and eat with them today. And where do they take me? A Polish restaurant. So my question was, why aren't you guys trying anything new? And they said, it's no good. <laughs> so we ate Polish food, a disgusting amount of it. And uh, yeah, good memories. I came back. Part of the arm wars thing too, is you do interviews. So on Friday despite being completely exhausted, I still did um, a whole bunch of lead up interviews to use as part of the show. And then there, of course, there was everything we did Saturday. And then today we had another half hour to 45 minutes of interviews that will be worked in as part of the overall production. I'm pretty excited to see what, to see what Neil does with it, despite my result. Dustin, how are you doing? Uh, <laughs> Fox ain't well, I felt like Papa Smurf beside Ryan. He's tall and his arms are bigger than my legs. Dustin just jumping in, going to start at the beginning. Yeah, it's only going to be a few more minutes here, and I'm going to try to get a couple of hours of sleep, even though it's still pretty early in Manitoba. I'm flying back right away. Daniel Eric. John is a beast. John is a beast. Haven't seen the match yet. Know the result, but haven't seen the match yet. Yeah. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I am going to P.I. Derek. Welcome to the chip jar. He is now a member of the channel, which you can be too, for just a couple of bucks a month. White Wolf. Freaking midnight there, right? Yes, pretty close. 
My wife's telling me what she made me for supper. <laughs> Dustin says, I agree. The travel makes a difference. All matches this year were outside North America. Given the fact that we are going off of, so we're basing all this North America ass whooping on three matches. I believe it's three matches. Um, let's just all chill out a little bit about this whole, the elites in Europe are much higher than the elites in North America. When you're basing it off of Levon, who is the world number one, who just beat Dave Chafee, you're calling him the world's best and based on the fact that he lives in, in Europe, he's, it means all European super heavyweights are better. That's asinine. Okay. Levon does the same thing to all the European super heavyweights as he would do to all the North American super heavyweights. The real matches are in the tier right below Levon. Alex and I, yeah, he whooped my ass. Hats off to him. But perhaps wasn't the best representation of East versus West. Rob versus Sasho. Like, all of these things were not the ideal scenario for any of us. So it is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Fox looked killer in his Aussie arm wrestler shirt. Peace, Ryan. Rest easy, big guy. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> I shall. And we're at that time of the night where I am going to go and lay down for a bit and then wake up a little bit later and start the worst goddamn journey home. <laughs> but the channel's been getting some good traction, so that's a positive. And uh, happy to see all you guys jump on here. Yeah, and no, I haven't been wearing the same armor shirt for days. I actually used the one thing in here that was useful in this room, which was the washing machine. And that's it. So I will say goodnight, everybody. And I will talk to you when I am back in North America. Thanks, everybody.